Moving on with the show, our first speaker is Liu Tixang, who is an associate professor in the Division of Humanities and director of the South China Research Center at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. He's a cultural anthropologist with research interests in kinship, popular religion, uh, food and globalization, cultural heritage, cultures and societies in South China and Hong Kong. Today he's going to be giving us a paper on the making of intangible cultural heritage, the Hong Kong experience. So you're very welcome. Uh, first, I would like to thank the uh, organizers that uh, give me the uh, opportunity here that to uh, let me to share with you our Hong Kong experience to talk about uh, intangible cultural heritage in Hong Kong. And I'm not a government official. So the reason I know this is because that I have been involved in some of the research projects. So what I'm going to share with you is what uh, my experience uh, in the last uh, 10 years. So uh, in 2006, uh, that uh, the first that the uh, Isaac uh, Intangible Culture Heritage uh, was implemented in China. So at that time that in Hong Kong, we had no idea that uh, what we are going to do. Because uh, China uh, signed the uh, convention uh, before that, I think in 2003. So China was prepared for the uh, Isaac Chen. So when it was uh, implemented in 2006, China has already had already uh, uh, prepared its own uh, 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 representative list. And in 2006, when the first list was out, and actually Hong Kong had two items on it. And of course, that Hong Kong didn't do anything for that two items. It was a uh, joint application uh, by Guangdong, Macau, and Hong Kong. So that means that we didn't do anything. We got two national items in 2006. So uh, in 2008, the second uh, uh, list released, and we had no item on it. Uh, but in, in 2009, and Beijing call Hong Kong government saying that whether you want to uh, apply for the national, uh, uh, apply your, put your list on the, your items on the national list. So Hong Kong gov government officials say that, oh, well, we should try. So then the uh, government officials give me a call saying that, uh, well, we know that you are doing research in that area. So we want to make that item onto uh, an application for, uh, to Beijing. But you have to finish your research in two months and write a report and produce a 10 minutes documentary. Okay, So that's how we got our first four items in 2011. Okay, We submit our application in 2009. It took uh, more than two years to get the result. So this is how we involve into the uh, uh, Isaac uh, system. Uh, because Hong Kong is part of China, but uh, is a one country, two systems. So that means uh, we are not necessarily to follow what uh, China do. So what the Hong Kong government do is that they want to do it on its own way. So in 2006, actually, that the government carried out a small uh, research project. The project was about that to uh, use the list in Guangdong and put it in Hong Kong to see uh, how it would happen. So uh, I was uh, helping the project and give the government some uh, suggestions. And in 2009, Hong Kong start uh, is a uh, 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 general survey. Uh, it's aiming to produce a uh, an inventory first to find out that what we have in Hong Kong uh, in order to safeguard the uh, Isaac items. So in China, there, there's a kind of a multi-level system. So there's a national list for Isaac uh, 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 for, for the whole country. But under the national list, there are several other lists. That, uh, that there's a list for each province and also a list for counties 
and also for uh, for uh, for cities. So there are totally 34 uh, regional uh, lists uh, in addition to uh, to the uh, 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 national list. Regional list that means uh, 35 lists. Because Hong Kong is a special uh, administrative region, so we don't have to go through those, uh, I mean, uh, 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 layers. That means we can direct submit our applications to Beijing. So, but if, for example, in Guangdong, if they want to submit an application from the local level, that means you have to first go through the county level and then the provincial level and then to the national level. So it seems it's much more easier for us to get the uh, national title. So this is the uh, system how it works. So uh, so uh, in 2006 that we have Cantonese opera and herbal tea uh, on the national list. So uh, in in 2009 that we carry out our uh, survey uh, for the. Uh, 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 to, to produce that the uh, inventory. In the same year, actually, that the Chinese government put our Cantonese opera to UNESCO and become an item on the uh, UNESCO list. Okay. So right now in Hong Kong, we have one uh, world item and, and uh, 10 uh, national item. And interestingly, interestingly that uh, our Cantonese opera uh, become be, uh, became the uh, the list on the UNESCO list before Beijing Opera. Okay, so that uh, Beijing treat us pretty well. So uh, in two thousand uh, ten, that uh, actually it's eleven. I I think it's a typo here. So our four applications to uh, Beijing all get uh, recognized as national items. So in 2011, so that means uh, the successful rate is 100 percent. But actually, that uh, in 2011, actually that the whole China application was about were about 3,000 uh, to uh, get into the uh, national list, 3,000 applications, and around 500 was uh, were uh, uh, recognized and four of us were uh, included. So in 2012, that the, uh, the organizer of the uh, Fire Dragon Dance is one of the four items that the bear also uh, be recognized as on the uh, national representative list. So actually that the Beijing government asked Hong Kong, because at that time that we have six uh, national items, whether how many people we would uh, recommend uh, for the application of bears. And it's interesting that only one case, only the uh, fire dragon dance, that the people uh, can, could nominate one people uh, for the position. But all the other uh, organizations refused. They don't want to be a bear of the activity. So the reason obviously is that because all these activities uh, organized by many, many people, not just one di individual. So no one wants to be the bear. That means that you are going to create a competitive environment. It's no good for the organization. So now today, uh, actually we have two. Uh, actually we have, have one at, uh, up to this moment, one bear. So in 2013, that we submit another four applications to Beijing. And in 2014, that we were told that all are included. So that all our applications were accepted by Beijing. So either that we have very good applications or Beijing treats us very well. So uh, in 2014, that we got our first ICH inventory list out. And in 2015, that we established the f uh, our intangible cultural heritage office. So uh, for intangible cultural heritage office, that means it deal with intangible things. But actually, that we did have a uh, antiquities and monuments office established in 1976. So it really deal with the built heritage. 
So now in Hong Kong, we have two offices. One deal with the tangible and one deal with the uh, intangible. So what is intangible cultural heritage? Actually, that when the first uh, uh, the term was out, actually no one knows. Uh, people don't know, and government officials they don't know it either. Okay, and put that in a simple way that uh, I would uh, uh, refer to the knowledge people have in their mind. So that's intangible. So they have their plan, their blueprint to, uh, for example, to uh, to to make this chair, to build this building. So that plan, that idea, is intangible. Okay. But while that uh, even people don't understand what intangible cultural heritage means, but because this is a government uh, 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 activity, so people would expect that, well, once my activity becomes uh, ISIC, I would expect that I will have some kind of resources to carry it out. So it's what uh, people expect. But one thing I would like to mention is that the uh, Chinese translation so uh, intangible cultural heritage in English is okay, but the official Chinese translation is "Fei Wu Zi Wan Hua Yi Chan." Yi Chan in Putonghua uh, or Wai Chan in Cantonese. It means that the things left by the dead people. So at the very beginning, the people feel that well, it's not very good. Okay, because this is our living activities. Why you call it? We are not dead yet. Okay. So and also another issue is the uh, the uh, how to translate uh, heritage. So uh, I mentioned before that 1976 that uh, we had a antiquities and monuments office, and heritage that time was uh, translated into Wan Wu, is cultural relic. So still today that. Uh, People still uh, refer heritage to uh, Wan Wu, cultural relics. So that means a kind of uh, confused that people don't understand what actually heritage mean, uh, even today. So uh, since people don't understand what I say, that means they have to learn it by examples. So in Hong Kong, I would like to say that now people begin to guess to understand what I say means. Uh, according to what we have done in the last ten years, okay, and also people uh, would uh, try to uh, reinterpret the meaning of yi chan. So it's not just for dead people; it's also for the living community too. So uh, when we first start our I six uh, program in Hong Kong, because uh, it's interesting that we don't know, uh, we we don't want to follow the system in China, because the system in China is kind of uh, top-down, so that the central government decides what to do, and then the order would send down to the province and counties, and they carry out their, I mean, I6 projects. If you check the list in China, you will find out that many of the items are close to uh, performing arts or uh, uh, handicrafts. Okay. So uh, maybe because that uh, they, because the people always think about uh, to make use of I6 items, and, and the tourist economy is uh, one of the I mean uh, popular uh, partners uh, for the I6 activity. But when we do this, that uh, we go to the uh, convention first to look for the explanation for what is an I6. And in the convention, that it clearly say that community is very important, and also it's about identity and continuity, and respect of uh, uh, human uh, communities too. Another thing that uh, this uh, description uh, emphasizes generation to generation, so that means the practice has been carried out for uh, some time. So based on this, that uh, we had come up with two major uh, 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 key terms. One is generation to generation. So that means that we would look for items that has a history of more than at least 50 years. And another point is that we 
need to see that whether the item has any relationship with the uh, local community, okay? Because it should provide people the sense of uh, belonging. So that's how we start our uh, survey. And the uh, convention also mentioned uh, five categories uh, for what can be considered as ICH. But as you see, these five categories include everything that we have in our daily life. So that means if just we go uh, along these uh, five categories, we can have a 10 miles long inventory list. Okay. So there's no way that we can do that. So what we do, because we didn't understand what I6 mean at the beginning, so what we did at the beginning is we first we uh, did a library study first. So uh, we have our RAs to uh, read all the uh, some academic uh, journals uh, in the last uh, uh, several decades, and also some popular magazines. And we went through all this and we produced a reference list. <coughs> so when we read those articles, we find all oh, people uh, has had strong interest in those items. So and then we put those uh, onto that uh, reference list. And based on that list that we look for those items in Hong Kong. So uh, we produced the list, of course, that the government would not trust us whether our list is good or not. So that uh, the government uh, set up an a, a advisory committee. So everything we, we uh, produced that we need to submit to the committee and then proved by the committee make up of uh, 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 academics and uh, uh, and community uh, uh, community uh, uh, members. Okay. So after we have the uh, reference list that we start our research, but at the same time that we adopt another bottom up arrangement. So uh, we allow the public to report to us any I six items they think important. And then we will send our researchers to go there and do the interview and do the recording. And throughout those uh, three year period, we get about uh, uh, around 200 uh, applications. And many of those applications overlap with our uh, items on the reference list. So in about three years that uh, we carry about 800 uh, uh, case studies and submit to the uh, committee for uh, consideration. Uh, before I move on, maybe a little bit uh, historical background about uh, Hong Kong. So Hong Kong uh, was a British colony in 1842. So after Hong Kong became a British colony, that means it's different from China. So uh, after 1842, there had been a lot of, I mean, uh, wars and, and, and political uh, unstable uh, uh, periods. So a lot of people moved to Hong Kong to escape uh, the uh, 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 problems in China. So in 1898, that the British also leased the new territories. So uh, Okay, okay, the Lofton part is the uh, new territories, okay? The British did it for 100 years. But the British only treat uh, the new territories as a buffer zone, okay? Because the British want to protect uh, her interest in the, uh, on Hong Kong Island, not affected by things happening across the border in China. Since it's a buffer zone that uh, the Hong Kong government actually did not carry out uh, much uh, development, in the new territories until the 1970s, okay. So in the new territories, you we had uh, uh, several big lineages. That mean uh, uh, <coughs> surname groups. <coughs> and some of these uh, lineages came to Hong Kong uh, five, six hundred years ago. So that means they were there for a long time. They had their own. Uh, they maintained their own traditions, and because the British did not develop the new territories. So many of those traditions have been uh, maintained. 
And also, I mentioned before that uh, because uh, a lot of uh, uh, people escape uh, China, come to Hong Kong, and they also bring along with their uh, own local traditions. And after they settle down, many of those traditions become localized. So uh, on the other hand, that uh, we also need to understand the uh, geographical location of Hong Kong. And Hong Kong is at the mouth of the Pearl River on the uh, eastern side. So that the river comes down from the north, that means people also come down from the north. So that in Hong Kong, we got pretty strong influence uh, from the Delta area. So we share a lot the uh, cultural traditions with the uh, communities on the other side of the river. So, uh, so this is a little background. So th I want to just point out that the diversity we have in Hong Kong. So you can imagine that we have many, many uh, cultural items, uh, cultural practices uh, uh, being developed and maintained. And for the research method that we do uh, participant observation, and we go to observe and record the activity. We only find, we only, we, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, we need to do observation and do recording because we only treat those activities that are still being maintained. And we will only put those existing uh, items on the list, not the one people said that we had that two decades ago. So if people saying that they are not carrying on those activities, we will not put them on the list. Okay, we also carry out all history in the wheel and to visit the uh, traditional shops uh, to locate uh, people who still uh, carry out uh, handicrafts. Okay, so this is the way we carry out our research. And but once when we carry out research, we face a very tough uh, problem. Uh, because for local communities, that uh, as for many local communities, they carry out annual activities, usually a temple festivals, to celebrate the uh, birthday of the deity. But since the birthday of the deity is on the same day, so that means if you have 20 communities celebrate the, uh, the, the birthday on the same day, that means you have 20 activities on the same day. <laughs> and we do not have that many, I mean, hands to do the uh, research. So that we need to uh, plan it at advance. Okay, so the so first year we go to one third of these activities and, and uh, another one third next year, another one third uh, the third year and finish all the uh, study in three years. So that's how we uh, handle that. So this is just give you a rough idea that uh, kind of uh, recurrent activities we have in Hong Kong. And uh, besides recurrent activities, of course, we all have uh, long recurrent activities. So many of these uh, items are performing arts, either or uh, handicrafts. So this uh, just some examples of recurrent activities. And on the left, upper, le on the left, upper upper side or corner is the ancestral worship, and then on the right hand side is the uh, lantern festival. These are carried out by those uh, big lineages. And the uh, lower left hand side is the Earth God Festival to celebrate the birthday of the Earth God. And on the uh, right hand lower corner is the uh, Hong Sing Festival, is the deity of the South, China, uh, of the South Sea. So people uh, celebrate uh, his birthday. And besides temple festival that in Hong Kong is quite common that for local communities to organize the jail festival. Uh, we also call it the uh, cosmic renewal riot. Usually people organize once every 10 years. And it's a uh, year long activity. So at the <coughs> beginning of the year, they would elect the uh, ritual representative, and then they will hire the Taoist priest to perform the ritual at the end of the year, okay? So we make sure that we will be there because if we miss that festival, we need to wait for another 10 years. So this is one of the uh, challenges we have. And those are long recurrent activities. And the, this one is the uh, making uh, 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 candy for kids and also the vegetable tea and the bamboo uh, theater and also the uh, making of lion dance hat.
So uh, how we classify those items? Excuse me. Okay, thank you. So how we classify these uh, items? Uh, we conduct about uh, 800 uh, uh, research uh, cases. So this is the summary of uh, all the cases we have. Uh, we conduct uh, about uh, 800 cases, and we submit the uh, recommendation to the committee that for 447 items, so that uh, the committee approved 477 on the list. And for this list, that uh, uh, we keep uh, a uh, 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 two layer categories. What I say is, so we make uh, the first layer is what what we call the major items. We have two hundred and ten items, but for under some of the major items, we have sub items. The reason why we have sub items is after we carry out our research in different places under the same name, we find out that people may have different <laughs> arrangement for their own activities, even they have the same name or organized activity on the same day. And we feel that it's not, I mean, right to put everything under just one name. So we, are, we went to recognize the uh, local diversities. So that's the reason that why we create this uh, double layer uh, system. So for example, that uh, we use the uh, Yulan Festival is the Hungry Ghost Festival that it's uh, held on the seventh lunar month. So uh, people believe that during the seventh lunar month, the ghosts would come out and we need to organize uh, rituals for them. And in Hong Kong that we study almost a uh, hundred cases of Yulan Festival in the seventh lunar month. And we find out that there are three different traditions. One is uh, by the boat people, one is by the natives who settled in Hong Kong for more than several hundreds of years, another is the Hok Lo tradition, and the last one is the Chiu Zhou tradition. Chiu Zhou. And they are not the same. But even within that, uh, for example, like the Chiu Zhou tradition, that people may have their own local arrangement uh, for their uh, celebration. So that we put all this in different, uh, I mean, uh, individual items. But under this, we, it's only just one major item. Okay, So we have 210 items. This is one of them. But this is very special because there are different I mean, uh, 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 diversities uh, under this case. So uh, then we move on to the reality and experience that uh, what we face. So uh, when a same uh, ISEX item is being organized, different uh, communities usually have their own special arrangements. We need to understand the, uh, this is what I said before, uh, the relationship between the ISEX item and the uh, community. We also need to consider whether the individual community would like to have their activities grouped in the same name. Because even they do the same activity, they might say that my activity is not the one that organized by my neighbor next door. So we need to get their consensus before that whether we want, we want to, uh, they want to be grouped into that category. So uh, some uh, activities that different communities may have uh, different names for the UN. For example, like the uh, Yunnan Festival I mentioned, that the uh, Yunnan Sengwei, Yunnan Sengwei is a, the popular name. But for the uh, 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 local uh, community, the natives, they would call it Da Yulan. Or for the uh, Hok Lo communities, they just call it simply a Jiao. Okay. So that's the reason that why we need to uh, create those uh, 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 sub-items. <coughs> the uh, local villages, they also organize many different uh, rituals. For example, that to celebrate the uh, uh, renovation of the ancestral hall or temples or some local uh, uh, rituals. So they have their own requirement for doing those uh, uh, ritual activities. But on the other hand, they also hire Taoist priests to perform the rituals for them. So when we go to study uh, these activities, 
uh, actually that we need to recognize there are two systems going on at the same time. One is the local system, that's what the local people want. Another is the Taoist peace system. They have their training uh, 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 for how to perform those rituals. Okay. So always is the case sometimes that we, we, we saw arguments between the Taoist peace and the local people, or we saw compromise between the two groups of people. And some of the items we study actually today still have commercial values. For example, like the herbal tea in Hong Kong. So it's on the uh, uh, national list, okay? But because of the commercial value, people don't want to talk about the details of the items. They would like to tell you the history and how, how long the history they had, how wonderful their product. But they would not let us even take photos of how they make those items. Because one hand is about the, uh, 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 the, the secrets. Another is because for this uh, food uh, uh, production, the Hong Kong government did a tight control on the hygiene of uh, food product. So they, they, they do not want our picture that to, to show to the uh, hygiene department saying that they are doing anything wrong. So they refuse all our I mean, uh, 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 photo taking uh, uh, arrangement for their uh, production activity. Another thing is, uh, the example I would like to uh, use is the Chinese Kung Fu. Okay. And actually that the uh, Chinese Kung Fu, all the Chinese Kung Fu actually originate in China, not from Hong Kong. But many of these uh, Kung Fu masters, they came to Hong Kong either after Second World War or after 1949. And then they settled in Hong Kong and then they developed uh, their Kung Fu training business. So, and f sometimes these Kung Fu masters, that they improve their own Kung Fu practice. And they would name their own Kung Fu training under his name, so that you have branches uh, 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 in Hong Kong. So that sometimes that uh, we, when we interview with them, they would uh, argue that which one is the mainstream. But uh, another, uh, I'll get done in, in one minute. And uh, another thing I, I would like to point out is that uh, we have the Kung Fu tradition from mainland China. But after 1949, because there were great need for uh, uh, cultural revolution, a lot of these local traditions were terminated or stopped in China for about 30 years. So Hong Kong actually is the place that maintaining the Chinese tradition during that period of time. When China opening up in the 1979 or in the 80s, it's interesting that you find people from mainland China come to Hong Kong to learn those traditions and bring them back to China. So that's what happened in the last uh, two decades. So, uh, but uh, many of these uh, local traditions because of our migration and young people find jobs in the urban area, so it's difficult for uh, many of these traditions to be uh, maintained. And uh, my conclusion, uh, the survey of Isaac was to investigate the current condition of Isaac items and based on the findings to make an inventory list for identification, research, safeguard, transmission. And in this process, the term Isaac was being created. When we want to conserve an Isaac item, we should consider the relationship of the Isaac item with the local community. And the meaning of the item in this socio-cultural context, without its socio-cultural context, an Isaac item will become simply just a performance or a display. It has no relationship with the local community. And we need to have people to actually carry out the activity. We want a living tradition. We don't want just a play or a performance. In a global economy that uh, most traditional skills and knowledge have already lost their markets, we need not only to safeguard these skills and knowledge, but also have to cultivate people's appreciation of traditional, traditional skill and knowledge. An Isaac uh, item can be maintained by different communities. We need to consider both the communities share the same elements and the, uh, the situation of local 
uh, diversity. Uh, thank you very much.